Hi. In the last session of this lecture, we are going to introduce kernel k-means clustering method. What is kernel k-means? Essentially, is we know k-means can only detect clusters that are linearly separable. They will have difficulty to handle non-convex clusters. For example, if you look at this set of data points, uh, if we say k equals 2, we want to find these two clusters of different color. For example, the red one is a core part right in the center. The blue one is a big ring surrounding this circle. However, for k means, you can only find something linearly separable, likely you will chop every cluster into half and you find something quite ugly. Then our idea is if we can project data onto a high dimensional kernel space and then perform k-means clustering on this space, we may be able to solve this ugly clustering problem. That means we will map data points in the input space onto a high dimensional feature space using the kernel function. Then we perform k-means on the mapped feature space. Of course, by doing so, the computational complexity could be higher because we need to compute and store n by n kernel matrix generated from the kernel function on the original data. If the original data contain n objects, if this n is large, then n by n kernel matrix could be very large. Actually, the widely studied spectral clustering can be considered as a variant of kernel k-means clustering. That's why these kernel k-means is a pretty interesting method. Let's look at a kernel function and a kernel k-means clustering. The typical kernel function, for example, we may have polynomial kernel of degree h. You use this formula. If we have Gaussian radial based function RBF, the RBF kernel is a typical Gaussian function. Sigmoid kernel is defined in this way. Then the formula for kernel matrix X, that means for any two points, Xi sub i and X sub j within cluster C sub k, then we can map them into this kernel function this way. Then if we want to compute some of the square arrows, okay, for kernel k-means, the formula is as follows. What you can see is if we want to find a number of clusters from 1 to k, k is the number of clusters, then for each cluster, uh, each point in cluster C sub k, this point, we just need to use sum of the square distance of phi xi and the cluster center C sub k. Then the formula for the cluster centroid is very similar to the k-means is we use C sub k, the center essentially is defined by sum of this function divided by the size of this cluster. The clustering can be performed even without actual individual projection of this one for the data points. We, what we need is just computing those formulas. Here I give you uh, the kernel function to see how we can do the mapping. Okay. Suppose we want to check how to map the real points into this uh, RBF kernel. Okay. We are given five original points like this x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 3 to x sub 5. For these five points, this is the original space. If we set sigma equals to 4, actually you can set sigma to other values as well. Okay. Uh, equals to 4, the calculation just a little nicer and simpler. So you probably can see, then if we want to calculate this distance, okay, this formula, this formula actually is the top, on the top of this part. Uh, what we can see is x1 is 0, 0, so th there are two zeros. And x2 actually is 4, 4, these are two fours. So when you compute this distance, you basically compute the sum 
of their square distance equals 32. Then based on this formula, we will get an e to the power of minus 32 divided by 2 times 4 square. Then you get to the result of e to the power of minus 1. Okay. Then you probably can see for this mapping, suppose sigma equals 4, what we can get is for k is when i equals 1, you will get x1, x1. You look at the x1, x1, they are the same. So this part is, is essentially you derive as 0 okay, for this mapping. Then if you get x1, x2, what you can see here is you get uh, this value is e to the power of minus 1. Okay. Similarly, you can derive other values. What you can see is originally you have five points. Once you map into this RBF kernel space, you get five by five matrix. That's why the computation could be more expensive because you map into n by n matrix. Uh, now we want to calculate the kernel k-means clustering using this example. For this example, what you can see is these are the original data points. Okay. Uh, for these data set, if we want to use k-means to generate the two clusters, you will be able to generate like this. This is pretty ugly because the, you can see this very dense kernel will be split and this ring will be split as well. You generate something really very ugly, not like a quality cluster. Okay. However, if we do Gaussian RBF kernel transformation, map data into a kernel matrix K for any two points using this function and a Gaussian kernel, we will be able to generate pretty nice clusters. Okay. That means the k-means clustering actually is conducted on the mapped data. And then we can generate the quality clusters. That's why the Gaussian k-means clustering could be rather powerful. Here are a set of interesting uh, references you want to look at. It. The first one is McQueen's paper. Uh, Lloyd paper you can see is published in 1982. Actually in 1957, there was a Bear Lab uh, paper collections uh, that, that essentially the method was first appear in 1957 in Bear Lab internal report. Okay. Then the other are interesting papers and the books you may like to read as well. Thank you.